Hello everybody, Mike here at Gabe from Scratch, and today we're talking about an open source C++ game engine, 3D rendering, all the graphical bells and whistles, and completely open source game engine called the Wicked Engine. Now if this sounds a little familiar, it's because we've covered a couple C++ open source game engines this year, and let's add Wicked Engine to the pile. The truth of the matter is, the Wicked Engine is actually, well it's well named, it's pretty wicked, and it's quite mature, even though it's got a version of like 0.24 or something like that. So without further ado, let us jump in and take a look. Now let's start off with the homepage here on uh, GitHub. As you can see, the source code is available. It is licensed under the MIT license. And now is when I'm gonna lose probably about half of you. This is for Windows platforms only right now. So basically it compiles for UWP, which is Xbox, Windows Phone, if anyone actually has one of those, um, and Microsoft Windows platforms. So uh, that is kind of a downside, but on the upside, it also uses a Vulkan backend renderer. So I imagine it should be portable to other environments. On top of that, it is entity component based. They ported that recently from an object oriented system to an ECS system. Uh, you can also script using Lua or you can use a C++ programming model. And here's where I'm gonna keep a lot of you. Uh, it models itself after X and A which is very, very cool. So you use the simple component-based composition of XNA and you handle things by implementing, you know, update, render, and so on. So the code for using this guy is quite simple. We'll see that in just a second. And on top of that, the, the rendering feature list kind of off the chart for this guy. So you can see that the renderers available are DX, I believe there's a DX11, DX12, Vulkan, and um, yeah, so that's about it. I, as I unfortunately stated earlier, it's primarily Windows platforms only, but with that Vulkan backend, it might be possible to port this to other environments. The very cool thing here is there are no dependencies. It is delivered as a static library, and this is one of those areas where working with C++ code can be really, really tricky. It's just getting the damn thing to build. In this case, you basically just link the lib in, follow these instructions, and you are up and going. And here is your basic, simplest example. And as you can see, it is very simple. Create the main component, it, set the window uh, and run it and that's that's your loop uh, you see here the, your code actually stays pretty consistent it does look a whole lot like XNA if you've used XNA before so you've got your uh, global input managers that you've got available here and then another aspect of this that is a bit challenging because the documentation is so-so is there is also Lua scripting now what they need is more example scripts of what you can do because it seems like you can script just about everything here using Lua uh, unfortunately and fortunately and unfortunately it is completely documented here's the script API um, and you see it's pretty comprehensive on what functions are available and what they do unfortunately and I think this is because of the object oriented to ECS port that they've done there's not a lot of examples to actually show you how to script in Lua but there is full Lua scripting which is quite cool on top of that there is a full editing environment that you can see right here so what you can do here is basically load in models load in scripts to control the models and you're creating your game world here essentially and then you can just save it out to a scene file that you can then basically load in one line of code from your game app side of things. And here you can do quite a few things. So we'll go ahead, we'll load a model in. Um, so these are the, the ship with it. So you see here's a damaged helmet. Uh, it supports uh, GLTF2 and OBJ file formats for uh, object loading. And here we are loading one of them up. You can see it in the scene. So let's go ahead and we'll set up our environment. So that's under weather, which is a little confusing. We'll load a sky in here. So there is a sky map for us. And that will light our scene accordingly, but we can also come in here, add a light into our scene. Uh, we can add various different types like directional, point, spot, spherical, rectangle, so on. I'll just add a point light. We can give it a color. Uh, we'll make this one like a soft blue, like so. And then just click add light. This one's a little strange. You gotta click here to like the translator to be able to select and move things. So I, I don't know why they chose to do that, but now that we have this light here, I can move it around in the world and you'll see it updating the results in real time. At the same time, you can navigate your world using the WASD keys like this, and then middle mouse button, and then orbit to see. And as you can see, the render here is very, very, very good. Um, so you can get some beautiful results. And uh, I was actually testing this out on a Surface Pro 6, which is an Intel HD 620 based device, and it ran just fine. So this guy actually performs very, very, very well. Um, the UI in this particular editor can scale a little poorly at times, so sometimes some of these things are not available. Um, so let's do make a real-time environmental probe. We'll put that in the scene. So there you see the uh, we now have uh, better rendering going on. I select that guy. Let's move it around. 
So, but there you can see now the environment effect on our helmet. Just beautiful, actually. Just You can see the reflections of the skyline going on. It, it is a very, very good looking render. On top of that, we've got post-processing effects here. So we can do subsurface ambient occlusion. We do light shafts. We can do god rays. We can add motion blur. We can add depth of field, uh, full X anti-aliasing. Um, and you're seeing as I'm putting these things on, they are all applying in real time. I could change it to a cartoon outline on the outside. And we could do, I think this is actually sharpen filter that I'm changing here. So you see there are a number of different post-processing settings we can configure on the fly. And as you can see from the end result, we've massively changed the way that our object is looking and rendering. Uh, you've got material control here, including a metalness normal map, so on. You can bring in a base color or a diffuse map, normal map, surface map, displacement map. Uh, we've got settings for tiling, reflection index, uh, pretty much everything you would expect for controlling. Uh, another thing we've got here is we've got control over our render path. So we can do forward, tiled, uh, tiled forward, deferred, tiled, deferred, and path tracing rendering. I don't actually 100% know what this one does. I assume this is new, the RTX stuff, uh, but I don't have an RTX device, so it runs slow as hell. So I'll go back to forward rendering in this case. But you see, you've, you've got your various different render paths available to you. Uh, you could load in a script to control it. Unfortunately, as I said, there aren't a lot of script examples here. Both these are around uh, camera controlling. Uh, so unfortunately, I can't really illustrate a whole lot there. Uh, we do have, again, though, some control over the camera, uh, the near plane, the far plane, movement speed, if it is an FPS camera or not. Uh, we have got particle effects right here. We can create our own particle emitter. Uh, we can set the mesh for our particle emitter. So we can add an emitter in. So there we go. We got particles going on in the background. Let's see if I can actually, let's restart that. So yeah, I'm not gonna get into that. But basically you've got particles as well. You could apply an image to those particles and have them, you know, you could create your fire effects or whatever. In this particular case, I'm, I'm not doing much with it. Uh, I could also grab an object in the scene like this guy. We can go into the objects panel here and you'll see here we have other options such as, well, we can make it renderable or not renderable. But most importantly here are also your physics settings. So we can have it collision shape being the convex mesh, um, the triangle mesh itself, box or sphere. And then we could turn on rigid body physics and see it fall from our world. Um, yeah, so that's what you do. You basically go ahead, you create the world you want. When you're done, you can click go ahead and save it. And then as I mentioned earlier on, you can basically load these world files you just created in code using more or less one line of code and then interact with it accordingly. So this is your, you know, your level placement and world editing environment. And then you go back and again, you've got your code environment over here. And we saw some, again, some of the example codes that they provided back in the original wiki. And there's, it's it's readable. It's very nice, clean C++ style code. And like there, there you go. Loading a model like that. Loading, getting seen, clear the world. Um, you know, it, it's it's self-explanatory. It's, it's not actually code that needs to have a huge amount of documentation to make sense of it. Now, again, I would love to see more examples for this guy. I think that is the biggest thing this guy is lacking. The documentation isn't terrible. So if we go in here, the documentation, we looked at the documentation for the scripting so far, but there's also documentation for Wicked Engine itself. It shows you here is the program flow you've got. And again, it follows um, the XNA model. So if these callbacks all look kind of familiar to you, like your fixed update, your load component, your or activate component load, and so on. This is pretty much exactly the same process flow that the XNA uses. And here obviously is your main game loop. Here is where you would respond to various different callbacks in, um, in the game loop itself to implement your code and logic. Um, but you can see here, the documentation isn't horrible, but they do, they definitely need more, um, well, more documentation, more examples for people to really be able to adopt this. Because the functionality and the feature set here is actually really, really quite impressive. And we'll go back over here to the features list and uh, I, I'm not gonna read all these, but you can see it's very graf um, graphics heavy. A lot of the graphics functionality you expect from a modern render is actually here. There's a DX11, DX12 render, Vulkan, um, font rendering, Blender exporter for various different pieces. Unfortunately, the vendor, the Blender World Exporter is no longer there. I actually think that this might actually be outdated now. I think they they deprecated support for their Blender Exporter because of their um, their World Editor being the preferred way to go about things. Multiple different texture support, all these various different graphics and rendering effects like lens flares, god rays, blurs, uh, so on. Uh, GPU accelerated particles, rigid body physics simulations from Havoc and Bullet. So I guess Havoc is private release only though. Uh, you got your full input handling. Uh, Lewis scripting and so on. Like, this is a remarkably full-featured game engine uh, 
that's just kind of out there. And if you're interested in learning a little bit more about what the developer, uh, his mindset and mentality was behind developing this guy, he's actually got a developer blog. And I'm going to link all of this stuff, of course, like I always do. But you see here the developer blog. If you want to uh, learn more about some of the thought process that went into creating this game engine or you just want to learn, um, you know, this kind of blog in general is just quite uh, rare and kind of cool to get your hands on. So if you want to learn a little bit more about uh, rendering or making a game engine or lighting effects and so on, uh, do be sure to check out their blog. It goes on for a while. This is 2016, so there's been a fair number of technical entries in uh, correspondence to the Wicked engine itself. Uh, so definitely check that out if you're interested in learning more about what's going on behind the scenes. And if you are looking for a C++ but open source engine, you know, a smaller project, single developer generally, and for some reason, Wicked Engine isn't your thing. Well, you may have noticed on this channel, we've covered a couple of them. And that's what we're going to go through right now. Your alternatives are, you can check out the Toy Engine. You can check out the Lyman Engine. You can check out the Banshee Engine. Or you can check out the Lumix Engine. So we do not have a shortage of open source C++ game engines. But Wicked Engine is pretty much as good as the rest of them. I, I haven't, you know, done performance comparisons on them hand, like, one-to-one. -one. But as I mentioned earlier on, I did my initial evaluations on a um, Surface Pro, and it worked absolutely amazingly well, other than some of the UI didn't fit that great in the editor. But the performance of the 3D engine itself was very, very good. So I think this may be, without testing or confirmation or anything to back up the statement, but it may be one of the fastest of those engines I just mentioned. Now, of course, if you're looking at creating a game tomorrow, you're still better off using Unreal Engine Godot or Unity. They're more polished, they're more supported, they're bigger and everything else. But if you're looking at getting into more of a, I have 100% control over my source code and I can still understand the scope and complexity of this engine. That's where these smaller engines really kind of come in, or especially if you want to just learn how to develop a game engine. Uh, these are great places to look. And this one is just really quite cool. So that is the Wicked Engine, uh, C++, uh, Windows, and UWP platform. But again, there is that Vulkan back end, so it is quite possible that it could be ported to other platforms in the future. And the cool thing, again, especially if you're semi-newish to C++, there are no dependencies at all. You basically just need a static lib, create your project, set up the static lib, and you are often creating code. And you've also got a, um, a binary compiled level editor you can use to create your levels to work with your code. So you can get up and running with this guy in like 20 minutes, a half an hour. And that is kind of rare in the world of C++. So if you're interested in getting hands-on and want to play around with a C++ smaller 3D game engine that has all the rendering bells and whistles, Wicked Engine is definitely one to check out. All right, hopefully you guys found that useful. Let me know what you think about it down below, and I will talk to you all later. Goodbye.